Please be warned that this audiobook contains strong language and violent scenes. Listener's discretion is advised. Nameless. Written and read by D.C. Wood. Chapter 1. Caning Time. Once upon a time, sounds of laughing children brought smiles to adults' faces. Nowadays, children's laughter brings anger, despair and fear to society. The youths were violent, aggressive, not caring who they hurt, who they tormented, only taking sadistic pleasure in the harm they inflicted, leaving memories that would plague victims forever in dreams and each waking moment. The man had been in his early seventies, simply on his way home to the housing estate with some shopping and looking forward to watching Bill Oddie on the telly. Just minding his own business, causing no harm to anyone, not even looking for trouble. But trouble itself wasn't as considerate as the elderly gentleman. He didn't even know there'd been someone following him for the last several minutes. When he saw a teenager approaching, he sidestepped to avoid him, but the adolescent moved with him. The old man moved again, but so did the teenager. Becoming suspicious and afraid, he stopped and turned to cross the road, only to see yet another teenager crossing towards him. The hoodie that had been stalking the old age pensioner kicked him sharply in the back of the legs. He cried and fell, just as the other youth smashed a glass bottle over his head. Cut open badly, the man's pain and torment were soon accompanied by bruises and contusions, courtesy of the three boys kicking him in all over. Two girls jumped over the nearest fence to join in on the assault, kicking his shopping bags into the road, scattering all the goods. Lose your shopping, Grandad, taunted one of the girls as they proceeded to stamp on the old man hard. The evil children shouted and hurled all kinds of abuse before a few adults on the street rushed in to stop the assault. The gang made a run for it, swearing further at the old man and his rescuers. Two stayed behind to help and call 999, while the others chased after the cowards. Younger and fitter, they soon escaped, laughing cruelly in a hideaway alley over their triumph, as they feasted on the chocolate bars, crisps and booze they'd taken from the old man's shopping, and smoking his cigarettes as the pièce de résistance. Soon, though, they began swearing at one another, arguing over how they were going to split the money they'd taken from the victim's wallet. The bickering quickly reached fever pitch, and looked like they would actually come to blows with one another. The thing that stopped it was the sound of the man coughing, then tripping and knocking some rubbish bins over. The leader of the gang smiled, taking a knife out of his pocket. The other boys, also brandishing knives, followed the leader as they closed in on where the sound had come from. The girls grinned and giggled, both thinking, This is gonna be good. Wrong place to be, tosser, yelled the leader. Come on out and we might take your dosh only. <sighs> Kids these days, sighed a voice, its tone filled with disappointment and cold intent. The sound of the gunshot terrified the youths. The sight of the bullets going through the teenager's head was traumatising. His body seized backwards to the ground for all his gang to see. The girls screamed and began to cry. The boys looked at each other then at the body. That precise moment, they'd all lost control, confidence and their ruthless edge. Leaderless, knowing what it was like to lose a mate, actually seeing someone die was truly horrific for the youths to see. The first time ever for them to witness such a thing. Is that fear, I smell boys and girls? asked the stranger as he came forward out of the dark. Oh, <laughs> I thought so. Now you know how it feels like. Unpleasant, isn't it? And I would know. Unlike you little tadpoles out of your pond? The man 
smoking gun in hand, lowered his weapon and put it back in his holster. The sight of him was bizarre. He was simply grey. Everything about his attire, featureless mask, bodysuit, gloves, boots and trench coat, all simply coloured. Grey, dull as nothing and symbolising oblivion. Who, who the hell are you? Me? I'm no one. Nothing. Just like you. Only infinitely less moronic. Not at all the cute little puppies who are past their bedtime. Better a puppy than a bitch, you bitch! Screamed one of the boys who charged towards the man with his knife. <sighs> Kids, sighed the killer again sidestepping the strike, grabbing the teenager's arm, and then snapping it in two. The hoodie fell to his knees, crying out in the worst pain he'd ever felt in his life. Think they know it all, when they don't know shit. Personally, I blame the parents. The other boy threw his knife at the costumed man, who was still focused on the injured teenager. Without even looking, the killer caught the blade and flung it back with one hand, right into the teenager's heart. The girl screamed and cried even more, backed up against the wall, completely in tears and hysterics. I blame the schools and teachers, continued the stranger as he let go of the boy's broken arm. But the source of it all, which I really blame is the appalling decline in discipline. He then callously snapped the last boy's neck, killing again in front of the girls, sending them deeper and deeper into terror. I remember the days, whenever some fat-lipped little so-and-so did something wrong, reminiscence for killer, as he slowly approached the petrified girls, teachers gave him a damn good caning. Parents smacked their asses, vicars put the fear of God in them, and you had wonderful, little, obedient children who wouldn't dare dream of doing anything like they do today. Then, society said corporal punishment was cruel, and it just had to stop. And now look what's happened. The kids are out of control. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I wonder why. The stranger grabbed one of the girls roughly by the wrist and threw her to the ground. The other was too frozen with fear to do anything but watch. The solution is obvious, he remarked further, looking in the inside pocket of his coat. Bring back discipline. Bring back caning to stop school kiddies from skiving. But even back then, teachers still had the wrong idea. A big stick is good in one respect. But this... The girl looked up in horror to see the large, rusty crowbar the man was now wielding. Is much more effective. No, please, screamed the girl. Why are you... Why did you lot kick that old man's head in and take his stuff. Wasn't nice of you, was it? What goes around comes around, flower. The last surviving teenager, huddled on the ground, just couldn't close her eyes. The traumatic sight of the man's violent assault made her witness. The vigilante, having finished his work for the night, turned to the last teenager, her mental state shattered beyond repair. She couldn't move, couldn't do anything, except listen to the vigilante as he kneeled down beside her and whispered, Welcome to the real world, children. End of chapter Nameless is written and read by DC Wood. In this work of fiction, the characters, places and events are either the product of the author's imagination or they are used entirely fictitiously. Copyright 2009 DC Wood. It is distributed by podiobooks.com.
For more information on DC Wood, his writing and artwork, please visit The Writings of Saviours at www.dcwood.co.uk.